Welcome to Viking Basketball with Tyler Geving. It's the final week of the regular season, and the Vikings are at home, Portland State, with two basketball games here in the Stott Center. Thursday night against Northern Arizona. That's faculty staff appreciation night. Also going to recognize uh, the great Viking football team at halftime of that one. There'll be a pregame tailgate out front of the Stott Center, so get down here. It should be a great night. And then on Saturday night, it will be senior night. The Vikings take on Southern Utah. And uh, now let's talk a little Viking basketball. And Coach, we're going to go back to last Saturday because that's worth reliving a few times. Uh, a great finish in that one, Portland State beating Northern Colorado 89-86 on a pretty exciting play. Vikings played well the whole game. Uh, Northern Colorado made a great run at the end, got the, got the game tied. Portland State with the last possession and uh, just take us through it. Yeah, well, I think we were maybe up, what, 13-15 with about 11 minutes to go. And uh, next thing you know, we start throwing the ball all over the place, missed some free throws. And Northern Colorado, credit to them, they capitalized it, they, on it. They stayed in the game. And, uh, yeah, next thing you know, we're, we're down one and kind of went back and forth a little bit those last three minutes. And then, um, yeah, we, we had last shot of the game. We, we tried to get the ball inside uh, uh, the Forte. They kind of took it away, and Donovan broke it off. and. Uh, got to the paint, made a nice pass to, to Kalen, and he just lined it right in. It was one of those you had a good look from it, from the bench, so you could almost tell the minute he, it was in the air, he was like, okay, this thing's got a chance to go in. So uh, that was a big shot for us because, I, you know, I thought we played extremely well for about, you know, 36 minutes of that game. Okay, and it was a big shot. The Vikings get the victory in that one. Uh, a big shot for a lot of reasons. Another reason would be that Northern Colorado is a potential first-round opponent for the Vikings in the Big Sky Tournament uh, next week. But uh, overall, Coach, uh, you and I discussed it last three games beating Eastern Washington. Played a great game up at Northern Dakota, or pardon me, North Dakota. Barely lost that one, and then of course the win at UNC. So the team playing well. You feel like you have momentum. Uh, it's kind of coming at the right time. Yeah, you know, it just, uh, for whatever reason, it took us, you know, 30 games to kind of get to this point. But I think more than anything, we've kind of settled in on you know, rotations a little bit more. And I, I think guys are uh, a little bit more comfortable out there, you know, changed up a few things offensively, not major things, but uh, just, you know, tweak some things. And I think we've just kind of been doing that all year to kind of see what's going to work. And obviously these last three games, um, I think we've played extremely well. I think, you know, that game in North Dakota, you could make an argument. We had, you know, chances to win that game, which we did. Um, we were right there. So I, I like the way we're playing. We need these two games at home. and. Uh, play well, uh, win or lose, we need to play well. So as we're going to the conference tournament, we get some some momentum. But I, I think we're kind of on the, uh, you know, trending upwards, I guess, right now towards the end of the season. So uh, this is a big weekend for us and, and for our team to, to, to continue that momentum. And you got a lot of players playing well off the bench. We mentioned Kalen Robinson had the big game at Northern Colorado. Deshaun Parsons had a great weekend last weekend. Of course, Cameron Forte has been playing great for quite a while, all season practically. Uh, Gangler coming on playing well, Donovan Stewart playing well. Really got a lot of guys kind of hitting their stride, I think. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit too, you know, going back to the beginning of the year with, you know, eight new bodies and, you know, you look out there right now, I mean, there, there's no Bryce White, there's no Braxton Tucker, you know, two guys we had. And Kalen was a red shirt last year, so really you got Gangler and Spickerman. And, um, you know, so it, it just obviously took a lot longer than we wanted it to take and for the fans and everybody else. But hopefully, you know, if there was a time to start playing well, now now is definitely the time. But, you know, we, we obviously went a little bit smaller, too. I think that's helped Parsons uh, play in the four position. And I think he's kind of getting some better matchups, you know, a la Marcus Hall maybe a couple of years ago when we went with that, uh, you know, four guard lineup. So, you know, we kind of went back to that a little bit. and you know, allows us to be a little bit more athletic. We can get up and down the court a little bit quicker, and um, and I don't think we take a big hit defensively either. Okay, and I got just a couple questions left here. First of all, kind of ask this question every time we get together, and that is uh, the team playing really well. What do you got to do to maintain that to get from here, two victories at the Stott Center, momentum to the tournament next week? Yeah, I think just, you know, cleaning everything up. We always talk about, you know, 1% or 2% better with our guys, and I think that's kind of the key right now. If we can just get – a little bit better defensively, a little bit better offensively, a uh, little bit better on the rebounding end, just kind of 
uh, you know, Monday we spent a lot of time just on ourselves and, and self-evaluating and little things and watching film on things that we can get better at, um, you know, over the next 10, 12 days. And I think we just got to just increase it by a little bit because we've been so close in so many of these games that, uh, you know, if we can kind of get over the hump and get 1% or 2% better down the stretch, then, then I think that's going to be the difference. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about, Saturday is senior night. Vikings have, will have three players playing in their final home game. And uh, it's always a big deal because for lots of young men, this is the end of their basketball careers. Uh, not saying it necessarily is for these three guys, but could be. So I just want a few comments on each player from you, and I'll just go through them. And we'll start with a guy who's had a phenomenal year, Cameron Forte. Just tell us a little bit about what he's brought to the program. Yeah, he's uh, he's been pretty good. I think, uh, you know, we thought that's what he could do when he got here. He got off to a little bit of a slow start. and. Um, you know, I think he probably thought it was going to be a little bit easier than what it was. But, you know, Cameron's had an unbelievable attitude. You know, here's a kid I started and then and then, uh, then I didn't start. I kind of, you know, had him coming off the bench and he never complained, never said anything and still went out there and worked extremely hard. And, um, you know, basically right now, I mean, he just put a double double in the book every single night. And, you know, anytime you're getting 20 and 10 out of a out of a post guy, I think that's a that's a luxury for us to have. And. You know, the sad thing about him leaving and Donovan leaving, you know, these are kids that you really only got to coach for about six months. And, you know, you start finally start to get to know the kids and, you know, how they can play and what they can do for your program, and you're going to lose them. But um, but that's also the, the risk you take when you take one-year guys. But but Cam's been a, been a great asset to our program and just a phenomenal kid. And it's uh, been, been a pleasure to coach him all year. Okay, and we'll talk about Donovan Stewart. Here's a guy who's who's really brought uh, some steadiness to the program, which was needed, and taken over that point guard role and performed really well. Yeah, and I think that was, you know, once again, you know, early on, we, you know, new to the program, wasn't starting, didn't complain, a guy that started 60 games at Edwardsville, and, you know, I just think it took him a little while to kind of get going and, you know, feel him out, feel us out, and then we put him in the starting lineup, and I think he's starting to play his best basketball, you know, right now. And and the great thing about Donovan, here's a guy that's married with a three-year-old son, and he walks into the locker room, and there's automatic respect from everyone. He's obviously our team captain, team leader, and keeps our team together. And I think he's been crucial to us during some of those losing streaks of, you know, those tough tough losses. You lose by one or two, but he's always kind of been the guy that rallies the guys and, and gets them going. So he, he's like an extra coach on the floor. And, um, you know, another guy that's going to be uh, it's going to be sad to – sorry to miss him at the end of the season because uh, he's starting to play some good basketball. Okay, and then finally Colin Spickerman. Guy sets a school record last year for blocked shots. One of the best shot blockers of all time here at Portland State. Uh, played two seasons, a local Portland guy. How about him? Yeah, you know, I think with Colin, when we recruit him, you know, it's nice to get local kids, a kid from Jesuit High School and, you know, went to Clark Community College and we signed him from there. But, yeah, last year he was he was phenomenal. And, and even this year with, with his shot blocking ability and protecting the rim, uh, running the floor extremely well. And uh, Colin's, Colin's had a good two-year career here and we're, we're definitely going to miss him next year. And, uh, you know, like you said, anytime you can have a guy that can – that can block shots like he can. That's that's a valuable weapon to have on the defensive end. And um, you know, the, the other two already had their degree when they came in here. Collins on pace to have his degree at the end of uh, spring quarter. And you know, I think uh, you know Don or uh, uh, Cameron and, and Colin have aspirations to go play uh, you know overseas next year. And I think it's you know attainable for for both of them. And hopefully. They reached their goal there, and uh, you know Donovan's, uh, you know, a kid with his degree that's, you know, wants to finish his masters and, uh, you know, get on with his life a little bit. But um, all three of them are outstanding kids, great human beings, and great representations of uh, our program. Okay, well, good luck to you. Good luck to those three seniors. We're looking forward to them playing very well in their final home weekend. Rem remind you once again, Portland State, Northern Arizona, Thursday night. Southern Utah comes in on Saturday night, 7 o'clock starts both nights. Go to GoVikes.com for all the information.